Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hello, my name is Olivia Brown and I am currently a fourth year undergraduate student at UCLA studying anthropology. And today, you saw the title of the video, you know what we're talking about. We are going to be taking a deep dive into linguistic anthropology. Not only what it is, but also some of the main themes and takeaways that I think you guys should know about linguistic anthropology. It occurred to me this week that I've actually made definition videos about every other main subfield of anthropology but I haven't actually done linguistic anthropology and I don't know how that happened. So I felt like it was finally time to do that video and yes, let's just jump right into it. So every time I do one of these videos on my channel, I start out with the technical definition that you guys would find if you were to just look up linguistic anthropology online, for example, and then I'll break it down and tell you guys what you need to know beyond this basic online definition. So starting off with that online definition, linguistic anthropology is an interdisciplinary field dedicated to the study of language as a cultural resource and speaking as a cultural practice. Now, as always, there's quite a lot happening in that definition and there's some things that it excludes and I want to make sure that you guys walk away from this video knowing everything that you need to know about linguistic anthropology. And so to do that, we're going to back up a little bit. We're going to start out with just a teeny tiny bit of the history of linguistic anthropology. Now, linguistic anthropology actually started as a field because scholars were beginning to recognize that many languages around the world were beginning to die out because the populations who spoke those languages were also dying out. Now, what began as a push to solely document languages that people were speaking around the world actually quickly transformed into a more theoretical field in itself. So now linguistic anthropologists are known for not only documenting languages, but going further and asking, well, what do people mean when they say certain things, right? What kind of meaning is conveyed through language? How does the language that you speak and how you speak the language that you speak actually represent you as a person? I have had the opportunity to take some really amazing linguistic anthropology classes in college. And through those classes, I really do think I've had a good grasp on some of the main takeaways of linguistic anthropology that I want you guys to walk away from this video knowing. So now let's dive into some of those main themes and bigger picture ideas that you would be learning as a linguistic anthropology student. Now something really powerful that I learned pretty early on about linguistic anthropology is that language is always changing over time. Now language is a very unique thing to study because in many ways it is quite different from other subjects that you might be learning about in school like math, chemistry, or history. History. And this is because language is actually subject to constant cultural pressures and changes and cultural evolution. So as people change and as cultures change, language changes with it. Now, one really great example of this that's kind of fun and not technical is taking a look at the English dictionary and exploring some new terms that have been added to the dictionary over the course of many years. Some things that have been added to the dictionary recently are terms like TBH, are terms like air fryer and terms like super spreader and these terms I personally believe are quite representative of the times and how we use these terms actually represents what's going on in the world another thing also that I think might help you understand this idea of language constantly changing through time is that if you were to look at the English language in Los Angeles 10 years apart the English language and how people use the English language to communicate their ideas is going to be very very different and this is because language is always changing now for these reasons, it can be really challenging to come to concrete conclusions because every single person uses language a little bit differently and language is always changing. But yes, <laughs> the point there is that language is always changing on to the next big theme. Now this concept I actually learned in one of the introductory linguistic anthropology courses, and that is this idea that all languages are created equal. Now, as many of you guys may know, some ideas do not translate directly from one language to another. For instance, there's things that you can say in Spanish that you can't really say exactly the same in English. And this goes for translating ideas across many, many languages, not just Spanish and English. And so what can happen is people can be like, oh, Oh, well, does that make one language better because maybe you can communicate more ideas or if it doesn't translate directly, what does that mean? And it opens up a lot of these questions that in many ways aren't valid questions. Themes and ideologies and experiences from your day-to-day -day life get communicated differently in every single language. And within each language, you have all the tools that you need to communicate what you need. This depends on who you are, where you're from, and no one language is better than another. At the very core of this idea that all languages are created equal is that each language is doing its best and doing 
the thing that it needs to do for that particular community and for that particular culture. So when you walk away from this video, please know that all languages serve an important purpose. They are all incredibly important to the cultures that are using them and no one language is better or superior than another. Now this point that I'm going to share with you guys about linguistic anthropology is probably my favorite one, and that is that language allows us to distinguish ourselves and our cultures from other communities and cultures around the world. Now of course there's this very objective way of looking at this. You go, oh well you speak English and that makes you different from someone who speaks French, right? Like that's that's true, we objectively speak different languages, but there's so much more to this idea. Now in the 21st century, I noticed, and I'm sure you do too, that there are many different ways culturally that we distinguish ourselves from other people. This could be our fashion sense, this could be the food choices that we make, this could be the hobbies we choose to engage in. And another way that we actually distinguish ourselves from other people, whether we know it or not, is the way that we use language. Now you use language depending on so many different demographic factors. Your age, your race, your sexuality, where you live. So many demographic factors actually play into the way that you use language. And speaking in these different ways actually allows you to identify with different groups of people and to fit into different groups of people. One classic example of this is something that you've all probably heard before, is that you speak differently to the principal than you speak to your friends. Now this has a lot to do with, again, fitting into your place in society maybe, if that's the conversation that we're having. So if I am talking to you, the viewer of this video, I am trying to identify the way I speak with maybe the student population, right? I'm telling you what I've learned in my classes and how I think this is really interesting. But if I was a professor, maybe teaching this as an actual course, there are things that I would be saying and ways that I would be communicating these topics very, very differently. I would be trying to identify with the professor community. Maybe, I, don't, I don't think that's how you say that, but I think you know what I mean. I'd be saying, oh, throughout my studies as a linguist in these places, right? And so you would you would know very quickly where I fit in to maybe the academic hierarchy depending on how I'm speaking to you. And this goes way beyond just academics. This of course goes with, like I said before, age, race, sexuality, gender, all these demographic categories. And it's really important and a really valuable thing to recognize as a linguistic anthropologist. And if you can understand that depending on who you are and all the variables that play into who you are, how these things impact your language, I think it is key in actually understanding linguistics itself. In my personal opinion, this isn't something that I've learned in my class, but it's something that I did want to mention. Understanding where you fit into the world, I think like understanding your purpose is a really big part of humanity. And language is a major tool that people are using to help us understand where exactly we do fit into the world. And so if we as anthropologists can understand this role that language is playing into the way that we find meaning and find purpose in our own lives, I think it could actually be a really valuable tool moving forward, whether that's educating people on how to use language or helping us to understand why language is so important i'm not really sure but basically linguistic anthropology is very important and that is one of the reasons why now the final theme that i wanted to share with you guys about linguistic anthropology is one of the main ones that i think you guys are going to be learning about whether or not you are just googling linguistic anthropology online whether you are taking a course about linguistic anthropology or whether you are a linguistic anthropologist who's been through many years of schooling the idea of socialization is a really big piece of linguistic anthropology. And socialization, generally, it's just the things that we learn about our culture and how we are taught to act in the world at the most basic level. There's way more to socialization than that, but I think you get the idea. And there is this really interesting concept that anthropology students are taught about how language and culture are two things that you kind of learn together. Like as you grow from zero to two years old, zero to a hundred years old, whatever it is, culture gets communicated often through a language. And so for that reason, you can't really disentangle the things that you're learning about language and then also about culture because they're constantly working with one another. 
And so understanding how we are socialized through language, how we are taught to act the way we act, say the things we say, um, with this linguistic, anthropological, cultural perspective is really, really important in not only just linguistic anthropology, but the way that we choose to conduct and research about linguistic anthropological experiences. So those are the main four takeaways that I wanted you guys to step away from this video knowing. Uh, that would be socialization. All languages are created equal. Language allows us to distinguish ourselves from other communities. And of course, that language changes over time. So I hope you were able to find something in this video helpful. I love linguistic anthropology. Some of my favorite books that I've ever read are about linguistic anthropology. And if this video is leaving you guys wanting more, like you're like, oh my gosh, I need more of this in my life. I have made some other videos about linguistic anthropology, one of them being a beginner's guide to linguistic anthropology. It's actually one of my favorite videos I've probably ever made. I just think it is so chock full of amazing resources. So I will have that video linked right here if you want to check that out. But I also have a linguistic book recommendation video, all of the things that maybe you want to know. I'll make sure to include them either here or in the description box down below. Finally, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for 2K. Like, what? 2,000 anthropol- what? Like, that doesn't- I like, can't even process it. I just- I don't know. I just- I know most people don't make it this far, but if you did, thank you times a freaking million. Like, that is so cool, and I can't even believe it. So, yes, you guys are literally the best, and it's all because anthropology is the best. So, yes, let me know what you guys want to see moving forward, and I will see you all next Sunday. All right, you guys. <laughs> Bye.